signs, by wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. To you it was shown that you might know that the Lord himself is God. There is none other before him besides him. Out of heaven he let you hear his voice, that he might instruct you. On earth he showed you his great fire, and you heard his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved your fathers, therefore he shows their descendants after them. And he brought you out of Egypt with his presence, with his mighty power, driving out from before you nations greater and mightier than you, to bring you in, to give you their land as an inheritance, as it is this day. Therefore know this day, and consider it in your heart, that the Lord himself is God, in heaven and above, and on earth beneath there is no other. You shall therefore keep his statutes and commandments, which I command you this day, that it may go well with you, and with your children after you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord your God is giving you for all the time. This is the end of the word of God. Second lesson. second lesson is Revelation 2 1 to 11 Revelation 2 1 to 11 I read unto the angel of the church of Ephesus writes this thing said he that holdeth the seven stars in the right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and thou and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles, and are not and has found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love remember therefore from whence thou hast fallen and has repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly. I will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. But thou, but this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to it of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God and unto the angel of church in Smyrna write this thing said the first and the last which was dead and is alive I know the works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan fear not fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison 
that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be out of the second death. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise. Apostles' Creed. first and after Easter, Almighty Father, who in your great mercy made glad the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, 
and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all our source of our enemies, that we surely trust in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, to do always what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We go to God in prayers and we need to worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's rise on Hallelujah. our feet as we begin to worship Hallelujah. this great God. Hallelujah. You've got times and seasons in your hands. You call forth light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are you have chosen to call us your own you are God you are God from beginning to the rest there's no place for argument you are God all by yourself. We say you are God. You are God. You are God. From beginning to the end. There's no, There's no place for argument. You are You are God all by yourself. We say. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
my life is safe in your hands. Begin to pray and say, God, commit the church, the pastor before God and say, God, Lord, may you uphold this ones, O God. Uphold them and their family. Lord, King of glory, O God, uphold them. Lord, we ask, O God, that you uphold them. Give them, Lord Jehovah, and say, God, the grace to stand tall and strong, O God, in the faith. Begin to pray and say, God, this morning, O God, Lord, the church, O God, is in your hands, O God. That, Lord, that which, O God, you have for the church today, Lord, we, we ask, O God, that you never pass us by. Thank you, faithful Father. Begin to pray, King of glory, for this nation and say, God, let God arrest every arrest of this nation. May the Lord, O God, be in this state, O God. Let his peace, O God, reign in this nation and in this state, O God. Thank you, faithful Father. Begin to pray, committing this nation before God. Ask God to reign. Ask God to reign. Ask God to reign in this nation. Ask God to reign in this state. Ask God to reign. Ask God to take glory. Let his name alone be reign. Let God and God alone take all the glory. No man shall be giving glory to himself. No man shall be giving glory to himself. No man can be beating his own chest and say, yes, I have done it. Begin to pray and say, God, in this season, in this time of God, this perilous time, this end time king of glory, this deadly disease of God that is being spread of God across. Lord, they will never come near our dwellings. They will never come near our dwellings. My family will never be victims of them. My family will never be victims of it, O oh God. This church, O oh God, shall never be victims of it, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray, committing yourself, O oh God, before God once again. I don't know this morning what you want God to do for you. Begin to pray and commit yourself before God. Ask God to say, God, Lord, may I know you more. I want to know you more. Lord, I want to know you more. Lord, I want to know you more. Let the Spirit of God abide in me. Lord, I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I just want to know you more, King of Glory. Begin to say, God, this church of God once again is in your hands. Thank you, faithful Father, because you are God. Lord, we ask of God that this, O oh God, this day, O oh God, Lord, even the word of God will hear today, begin to pray and say, God, commit the, the man of God that will give us this bread of life. The Bible says, O oh God, that this is the bread of life in which, O oh God, your people takes in. Begin to pray and say, God, as we take in this bread of life, O oh God, may we never be tested again. And may this bread of life sink into our hearts, O oh God, that we will meditate on it day after day. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Heavenly Father, King of Glory, we want to bless your name for a day like this. We thank you for your faithfulness upon our lives. Lord, we thank you for those five you've led us. We ask, O oh God, and Lord King of Glory, as we continue, may you continue with us, O oh God. Thank you, faithful Father, because you are God. For in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, have we prayed. Amen. The grace.
we need you to strengthen us. We need you to show us the way. We need you to lead us safely to eternity in heaven at the right time. We ask, O oh God, that you speak to us in the name of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Once again, on behalf of our Father and the Lord, the Venerable Ifai and Yaboso, I want to welcome you in Jesus' mighty name. We are still in our Easter season, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this morning we're going to be looking at briefly one of the benefits of Easter. Jesus rose from the dead. What does it have to do with our Christian faith today? Because what you believe will be your strength. What you believe will be what you do. When you see people who are fidgeting, one of the reasons is what they believe in, what they have had and they have agreed with. And in this season, God wants to remind us something very important with Easter. Easter is not a mere date for celebration. Easter is mostly a reminder of what God has done for you, which you ought to enjoy here on earth. Easter is part of the event that brought about God's redemption here on earth. And redemption simply means to buy back. So God has bought back something that was taken away. So in Easter, Jesus Christ has bought back for you your freedom. Freedom from bondage. All kinds of bondage and also freedom from bondage of religion. Religion, I mean, is man trying to get God by his own power and strength. Man walking out the modalities to reach God. So God has spared us all those excesses and stress and he has sent Jesus to purchase for us freedom. Hallelujah. Briefly I'm going to be sharing with us from Matthew's account of Jesus' resurrection. Matthew chapter 28, I'll read just two verses. Matthew 28. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and uh, other women, other Mary, went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. Hallelujah. I want to share with us briefly on the dawn of a new era. The dawn of a new era. Easter to us is a dawn, the dawn of a new era. Era here simply means a fixed point in time from which a series of years is reckoned. A fixed point in time from which a series of years is reckoned. So the time we are in, the years we are going to walk here on is what God is talking about from Easter onward the believers or those who come to God through Jesus Christ what will happen and how they will walk and how they should walk with God. Error also lets you know what uh, is acceptable 
to God what God requires from us, how we should worship Him, and how we should no longer. If you read this passage I've just read to us from King James Version, you see the Bible in King James saying that in the end of Sabbath, the end of Sabbath, that was when Jesus Christ rose from the death. And Sabbath here is uh, a symbol or connotes legalistic kind of worship of God that is empty of the Spirit of God. It is a stereotype kind of worship of God, man-made kind of worship of God, mechanical kind of worship of God that is empty of the Holy Spirit. That is without Jesus Christ the truth. That was why when Jesus came and met the Jews in what they were doing in the bid of worshiping God, he marveled at them. He said to them, you study the scriptures looking for life that you cannot find in the way you are going. Jesus the life they are seeking in searching the scriptures, slaughtering of animals, obeying rules laid down by their elders, was standing with them. They did not recognize it. Jesus Christ himself in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 says he did not come to destroy the law and the prophet, but he came to fulfill it. Which means what they were looking for by what they are practicing had arrived. And because he has arrived, they ought to automatically switch over and receive what God has given to them as an answer to their prayer, as an answer to prayer. You remember when we read in two Sundays ago, that Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. And immediately God sounded from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. What it means is that from now onward, who you should listen is no longer the prophet guiding you. A prophet trying to guide your life lead your life as in leading you the way the Holy Spirit ought to lead you. He's saying that from now onward you should listen to Jesus, that God will be led, leading his people through Jesus Christ. So that if you want to know what God wants from you, look at Jesus and you will get all that you need God expects from you. So Jesus coming was the dawn of a new era. The era whereby people worship God in truth and in spirit as he said to the woman at the well in, Matthew, in John chapter 4. He said to her, the time has now come when the true worshippers will worship God in truth and in spirit. Which means what matters is the Spirit of God, the presence of the Spirit of God in your life. And where the Spirit of God dwells is in your heart. And the Bible says, where two or more of you are gathered in my name, there I am in your midst. Talking about people that have the Spirit of God put in their lives, in their hearts, meeting together to form a spiritual house where God can inhabit it also means that if there are no hearts here for God that God can reside in, then there is no church. If we are not here, then here is never a church. The presence of God we find here is the one that came with us from our homes to this place. So, the dawn of a new era is the era whereby people will have the Spirit of God in them and they can communicate with God freely because they have been licensed to do so. 
they can now do good works and it will be called spiritual in the eyes of God and acceptable to God that is what Jesus has done for us there's one thing we must not fail to remind us here this morning and that is the fact that as Jesus Christ is our model as Jesus Christ is our direction we must fix our eyes always on him just as the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith it means two things it means you should copy and learn from Jesus to copy and learn from Jesus is just what Jesus told his disciples in Matthew he said take my yoke upon me upon you and learn of me to yoke together is just the picture of how they used to plow their land those days before farming just as we have tractors today tilling the ground digging ridges those days they will yoke two animals together they will put a bar on their necks so that the two can walk together while it will be pulling behind it a sharp tool that is connected to the animal and the owner of the farm will stand upon the sharp tool a certain pressure on it while the animal drags him along and the earth will be tilled they till it in a, on a straight line it goes that way because the animals are working together there's a work we are going to do for God here on earth and God is saying that you must be yoked together with Jesus and what ties you together with Jesus is the Holy Spirit they that are joined to the Lord are one spirit the spirit of God comes into your life the day you give your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior that's what we mean by being born again the life of God is put inside of you by the Holy Spirit so you can reason like Jesus you have Jesus kind of mind just as the Bible says in 1st Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16 that we have the mind of Christ he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit we know what he is doing in the now and we also walk that was how Jesus walked with the father here on earth he said my father walk and so I walk what you see me do is what I see my father doing what you hear me say is what I hear from my father the problem we have today is that we are not yoked or we have unyoked ourselves from the Lord and we are beginning to do our own things and that's why we find it that the power of God is no longer as it ought to be in the time of Jesus now the church in some cases are looking beggarly as we ought not to be we ought to be in church if we are yoked together with him the same thing he saw we will see the power of God he saw we will see the same backing of heaven he enjoyed we will enjoy here on earth if we allow ourselves to be yoked together with him for that's how we can learn because the Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher in this era we are in God accepts only those who fear him those who fear him in Acts chapter 10 verse 35 the Bible makes us to know that God accepts those who fear him but in every nation 
Anyone who fears him and does what is right is what? Acceptable to him. You may not know everything about her liturgy, but it's good you know it. You may not know all the rudiments, how we bend our heads, how we keep our hands, how we do. But one thing should not be lacking, and that is the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. This era is the era the Holy Spirit leads. In Romans chapter 8 verse 14, the Bible says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God are who? The sons of God. When the Bible uses the word sons, it means mature children that can handle business. God's business. God can entrust in them business of the kingdom to do. Only those who are led by the Spirit, those who are led by the Spirit, are sons. And that's the kind of worshiper God is looking for in this area. Those who worship Him in spirit and in truth, because God Himself is spirit. Can two work together except they agree? You must be like Him to be able to work with Him. Just like electric current can only be transferred from one point to the other through a right conductor. For God to work with you, he must put his spirit in you. And that happens in new birth when you give your life to Christ. Everybody must meet Jesus at the cross and surrender to him before he can be useful in the sight of God. So, for us to learn from Jesus and walk the way he walked, we must be yoked together with him. We must be yoked together with him. And also, looking unto Jesus simply means faith and confidence in him. You trust him. You rely on him. In these difficult times, God expects you to believe him, to trust him. He has promised, said, I will be with you always to the end of the world. He has not left you. So no matter what is happening in our times, what the devil is trying to achieve is to achieve fear and cause people to miss their steps, cause people to lose their faith, threaten them with a lot of things to make them compromise. Jesus is saying, do not compromise, for he's still with you. He has not left you. The devil can only do what he wants to do when the Christians are removed from this earth. The devil can take over only when the believers have been removed here. As long as we are here, the Holy Spirit is still here. God's authority is still here. And any time we open our mouth to decree a thing, it will be established here on earth. And we decree that no weapon formed against the church shall prosper in the name of Jesus. And every tongue that reason against us, reason against you, we command be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And lastly, I want to say that in John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 17, The Bible says, He that doeth the will of the Lord abideth forever. For you to remain safe, remain in the word of God. Remain on the path of righteousness. Everything you do, practice the presence of Jesus. Before you move out the consciousness of Jesus with you. Before you speak, remember Jesus with you. He that doeth the will of the Lord will abide forever. Let us pray. Come and take 
your place, O oh Lord, come and take your place, O oh Lord, in my life, come and take your place. Take your place, I pray. Come, take my place, place, your place, oh Lord. We pray, come, come and take your place. place. Jesus Christ. To God's mighty hand we commit you. The Lord bless you. Keep you. Make his face brighten upon you. His face remain with you. In the name of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Oh, 